What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and I don't think I've ever received so many requests to review a single projector. Well, I do hear you guys, so today we're gonna be reviewing the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. So here we have the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector, which is priced at $2,800. Now before you pass judgment on the price, you should know that Ultra Short Throw Projectors are usually pretty expensive, especially 4K ones. And not only is the Vava an Ultra Short Throw, but it's also a laser projector. This means it uses lasers as a light source, which not only makes it incredibly bright, but also means that you could get up to 25,000 hours of life from the light source. And you get full brightness once it powers up, so you don't have to wait like you do with lamp-based projectors. Okay, so in the box you'll get a Bluetooth remote that's unfortunately not backlit, batteries for the remote, a five foot power cord, a cleaning cloth for the lens, and the user manual. And my first impression when lifting this thing out of the box was wow, this thing is pretty big. Not only is it big, but at nearly 24 pounds, it's also pretty heavy. Now to be fair, you don't have to ceiling mount it, so this isn't really much of an issue. And I have to say, I really like the simple design of this projector. It has a white casing with gray fabric wrapped all the way around that sort of reminds me of the Google Home speaker. And the only button you'll find is the power button, which is positioned on the top near the front. And recessed down into the top of the projector is the lens. There's also a motion sensor here to protect your eyes from the bright laser lights. So if it senses motion near the lens, it'll quickly switch to a black screen and ask you to press a button to return back. On the sides of the projector, you'll see dials that are used to adjust the height of the feet on the front. And hidden behind the mesh fabric on the front of the projector is an impressive pair of 30 watt Harman Kardon speakers for a total of 60 watts. The back has all of your ports, including three HDMI 2.0 ports, which is a huge plus, a USB port that can be used to playback media, 3.5 millimeter audio video input and output jacks, optical audio output, and an ethernet port, even though it does have built in Wi-Fi. And this thing is absolutely loaded with features. So of course, as I mentioned, it's an ultra short throw 4K laser projector, but it also has HDR10 support, support screens up to 150 inches, has built-in Wi-Fi, electronic focus, and it even has Bluetooth 4.2 for audio input and output. So clearly this isn't your average 4K projector, and the fact that it runs Android OS means that you get a few extra features that you won't find elsewhere, like app control using the Vava app. So the app allows you to remotely control the projector with a virtual remote, cast pictures, videos, and files directly from your phone, and even cast your actual phone screen if you have an Android phone. So the Android interface on this projector is cool, but it's certainly not as nice as Android TV or some of the other smart OSs from other manufacturers. So for example, I wasn't able to launch YouTube or Netflix since I got error messages about the device not being supported. Now I was able to install Plex, which actually worked pretty well, even though the movies would sometimes just stop for no reason. So long story short, you probably shouldn't rely on the built-in interface, so I highly recommend buying something like the Nvidia Shield, which works absolutely perfectly with this projector. So the settings menu on this projector has a few helpful features like Wi-Fi setup, display settings, sound options, Bluetooth, and other general settings. So the display menu gives you a few helpful options like being able to change the brightness mode between standard and high, but it does reset back to standard whenever the projector is powered off. You can also change some advanced image settings like contrast, saturation, tone, and color temperature. And even if you like the way the image looks out of the box, I'd at least recommend switching the color temperature from standard to warm since everything has a blue tint in standard mode. Mode. And in this menu, you're also gonna find your options for keystone correction and electric power focus. Now, both of these options are critical to get the best image, even though the power focus can be a bit difficult to get perfect using the squares. And in the Bluetooth menu, you can switch between Bluetooth input or output, and you can pair other devices to the projector, such as a Bluetooth keyboard or Logitech Harmony Hub. Now, one thing I wanna mention about the settings so you don't end up pulling your hair out like I did is that there's a hidden menu that you'll need to access in order to display 4K content. So when the projector is powered on, you just hold down the menu button. This displays a pop-up menu that gives you access to some settings that you won't find anywhere else. And the two most important settings here are HDMI 2.0 as well as HDMI CEC. Now, I'm not sure why these settings were turned off by default or why anyone would ever wanna turn them off, but I highly recommend turning them on before you do anything else because without HDMI 2.0, you'll be limited to 4K at 30 frames per second and you can't display HDR. 
All right, so how was the install? Well, I'll be honest, even though it's fairly easy to set up since it just sits right in front of your screen, it was pretty difficult to get the image perfectly square onto the projector screen. Not only that, but it also has a pretty big vertical offset. This means that depending on how high your TV stand is, you might have to move your projector screen closer to the ceiling. So for example, to project onto my 135 inch screen, the screen has to be nearly 16 inches above the projector. Now, luckily I have fairly high ceilings in my home theater, so this isn't a big deal, but it might be an issue in some rooms. And even though it is an ultra short throw, I had to position it about 15 inches from the wall. Now that doesn't seem that far, but that's actually way past my stand, so I had to find a way to make it sit farther out towards the center of the room. All right, so enough about that, how's the image quality? Well, I have to tell you that I was absolutely blown away by the picture quality from this projector. Now, it did need some adjustments out of the box since the color temperature was a little too cool, but overall, I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised. So even though this is a certified 4K projector, it does use pixel shifting like the budget 4K projectors that I've reviewed in the past. This means that it does display 8 million pixels on the screen, but the chip isn't native 4K, so it won't look quite as sharp as a projector with a native 4K chip. And as far as HDR, the HDR performance is okay, even though the colors don't pop as much as I would like. Compared to the some of the 4K HDR projectors that I reviewed earlier this year, the colors appear to be kind of muted and the picture lacks contrast. It also has a tendency to lower the brightness a good bit, so keep that in mind. Overall, it doesn't look bad or anything, but it doesn't have that wow factor that you expect from HDR. And the black levels are about average for a DLP projector, so I won't say that I was blown away there, but the extra brightness does give the illusion of better black levels. Actually, I'd say this projector has a brighter image than what I've seen from some of the 3000 lumen DLP projectors, especially after calibration. I guess this can be attributed not only to the laser light source, but also the fact that it's sitting just inches away from the wall. All right, so what about gaming? Well, this is the one place where this projector could be a lot better. The games look fantastic, but unfortunately this projector has an input lag around 100 milliseconds, which is probably the worst I've seen on any modern projector. The input lag wasn't super noticeable with every game, but it's just one of those things that just feels a little weird with certain fast paced games. Okay, so let's talk about these Harman Kardon speakers. Now, I really didn't have high hopes for these speakers since they're built into the projector, but these actually sound pretty good. Of all the projector speakers I've had the chance to review, these definitely sound the best. Now I do have to say that I was able to hear a really high pitched whine that I noticed especially when the unit was first turned on. Now I didn't see any mention of this from anyone else online, so I don't know if this is just my unit or if I'm just extra sensitive to high pitch noise, but I did feel the need to mention it. Another thing I wanna mention is the behavior of HDMI CEC on this projector. So supposedly all the ports support HDMI CEC, however, I had issues getting HDMI CEC to work properly. And since there's no infrared port because it uses Bluetooth, there was no simple way to turn it on or off with anything other than the original remote. Luckily, I found a post online where someone mentioned setting up a Xiaomi projector as a Mac computer with the Harmony Hub, which allowed them to control it through Bluetooth. And lo and behold, this actually worked for the Viva. Now, it didn't allow me to turn the projector on with the Harmony Hub, but it did allow me to hit the sleep button to turn it off. So after I added it to the Harmony Hub, CEC just randomly decided to partially start working. So long story short, HDMI CEC is pretty buggy on this projector, and hopefully they can fix it with an over-the-air update, but I highly recommend getting a Logitech Harmony Harmony Hub to automate it. Overall, I think the Vibe is a good projector even though it's kind of rough around the edges. Now, I mean, to be fair for this to be the company's first projector, I think they did a pretty good job. Sure, it has a few issues like the high input lag, washed out HDR, buggy HDMI control, and the Aptoid interface, but considering its brightness and ease of setup, I still think it's a worthy contender. And the only competing projector that costs less is the Xiaomi, but this has much better color. That being said, considering it's priced so close to the Epson 5050UB, it's kind of hard to recommend it over the Epson unless you absolutely need an ultra short throw projector. I think a price around $2,000 will be more fitting, but I'm hopeful that they could fix some of the minor issues with some over the air updates. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, as always, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.